Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today we're going to be taking an old damaged concrete pad like this one and transforming it into a new one. Like this on Modern Builds. I might have one of the worst sidewalks out there with a ton of voids, but that means we've got an awesome tutorial planned. Let's get it. The first thing I'm doing is pressure washing this sidewalk. I need to get rid of any of this loose gravel and as much of the dirt as possible so that the new concrete can bond. In this clip, you can see just how much debris was embedded in the concrete. And technically, I would say that a pressure washer isn't necessary, especially if your concrete isn't in as bad a shape as mine. Just be sure that there's no oil, loose dirt, rocks, or chips in the concrete. Over time, dirt and the yard have encroached on this sidewalk, so I dug back a few inches. That way, when we pour the resurfacer, it's able to flow over the edge. The concrete resurfacer I'm using has a maximum depth of one half of an inch. And as you can tell, these voids are way deeper than that in some locations. So that means first I need to build up this slab. And to do that, I'm gonna use some of this final concrete patch. This is a 40 pound bag and I'm gonna mix it up with water with a mixing drill attachment. And this needs to be thick enough that it holds its shape. One reason I'm using this product is because you don't need to use a bonding primer to existing concrete. So we're saving a step. This first short clip that you're seeing was shot on my phone. My bad for that. I forgot to click record on my camera, but you can see how I'm using this small trowel to work the concrete patch. My goal here was just to get a rough shape for our sidewalk. I wasn't trying to get anything perfect. It was obvious where my low spots were, so I just made sure to really press it into the existing concrete. That way it bonded well. I'm gonna throw in the rest of this first bag and we'll probably end up using the rest of this second too, but we'll save about a quarter of it. Spoiler alert, I did end up using the full second bag to get this filled in. And I'm sure there's quite a few out there with more concrete experience than me, so if you have any helpful tips, please leave those down below, especially if I missed them. Next, I'm gonna use the flat edge on this board, referencing the undamaged part of our concrete to level off the high points in our concrete. I also used this wide magnesium float that did a good job of evening things out. Here around the corner, I found it was easy to pack the material onto the sides by hand and then build a decent corner that I could then screed around and get flat. And we had just enough material to kind of get everything flat with the two bags that I had mixed up. Already our slab's looking way better. It's in one piece, but I do still have a couple of low spots. You can see like right here in between the flat sections of the old slab. So what I'm gonna do really quick is use a honing block, which is a 20 grit abrasive to take down any of the high points on our first coat. That way we don't build up material, screening a surface that's higher than we want. And likewise, I made sure that I didn't dig in with my honing block because I still needed to build up the layer. I just wanted to make sure that my trowel had a good smooth surface to reference. Now the likelihood of you all needing to do a second coat with the concrete patch is low. Remember, I've got a very distressed sidewalk that I'm working with here. I would imagine most people just have a few small sections or a corner that they need to fix and then they can do a resurface. But in modern builds fashion, we're kind of taking it to the extreme, kind of showing what's possible using these products. And I should mention QuickRete isn't sponsoring this video. They don't know I'm making it. I'm giving 100% candid feedback. So anyways, as we round out this second coat, I wanted to make sure and reconnect the porch and the sidewalk like it was originally. This house did not have gutters on it for 50 years since it's been built, but I'm getting them put on. And a lot of this damage that's been caused by water won't happen again. And that's why I feel confident doing a recoat. As a quick final prep step, I added this eighth inch strip of wood in between the sidewalk and the planters just to act as a retaining wall. It's also gonna give me a really nice reveal once the sidewalk's done between it and the planters. And if you have any expansion gaps, you wanna use foam, duct tape, whatever you can to prevent concrete from spilling down in there. The directions on my concrete top coat do not require a bonding primer like this, but I wanna get the best results possible, so I'll use a roller to apply a coat of this. And the directions say to dilute this one part bonding adhesive to two parts water, but I went with a little bit more of a concentrated mix. And once this dries, it'll finally be time to do our concrete recap after a word from today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you need a website, online store, or just a custom domain, Squarespace is your one-stop shop and you need zero website building experience. And now, 
With Fluid Engine, it's never been easier to unlock your unbreakable creativity. This is their next generation website design platform with enhanced drag and drop editing technology on both desktop and mobile. There's also no limits to the number of products that you can have on a Squarespace site, whether that's a physical good, a digital good, or a service product. And if you take payments in person, Squarespace has got you covered. By connecting the Square card reader to the Squarespace app, all of your sales, orders, and inventory are up to date online and in person. So to learn more and to build your own Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info, make sure and follow my link down in the description. That's squarespace.com slash modern builds. And don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site, store, or domain when it's time to go live. As always, thanks to you guys for watching. Big thanks to Squarespace for supporting. Now let's finish up this sidewalk. And now, it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for, or at least I've been waiting for, and that is to do our first coax of the Quick Re Recap. This is a self-leveling concrete resurfacer. It's designed to fill in all of our low spots, and we should be left with a really nice sidewalk afterwards. You spread this stuff out with a squeegee. This is a 24-inch wide one. It says to make sure and work it into the concrete. And before it dries, you can do a brush finish if you want. But on this, I'm going to go for a smooth sidewalk. If that doesn't work on the first coat, I'll use the broom on the second. Let's mix it up. So I got a helpful tip in my Instagram comments, and that was that if you add the amount of water that it says in the directions to your bucket before you add in the concrete, mixing is easier. And that turned out to be true. You'll see me do that later. And you wanna be able to stick your finger in it and have it drip. If it's too stiff, it's not gonna self-level. And now it's game time. To start, I was a little bit bummed out because I noticed I had some tiny chunks in our concrete. Now remember, I'm experimenting. This is my first time doing this. I'm learning as I go, so learn with me. I'm gonna start spreading with my squeegee. Now it says to kind of scrub it in, so I'm gonna do that a little bit. One thing I noticed is it's easy to accidentally lose concrete over the edge of your sidewalk. So really try and control the flow so that you don't spill what you wanna use. All right, immediate reaction is I did not get this perfectly smooth with a squeegee. I think a little bit more concrete would have helped so I could have just let it spill over. But I've got a strong feeling a second coat's gonna be necessary regardless. I'll show you a few close-up shots so you can see the texture that we're getting. I don't think it's gonna end up being glassy smooth. For instance, here's a high spot in the patch that we had. The recap just didn't quite build up high enough in a couple of locations. Before everything got too stiff, I made sure to clear my expansion joint and I also got rid of a lot of this spillover on my edges. I didn't want this to harden. We're making progress, but this is definitely not finish worthy. So I'm pretty much committing to a second coat, but I do want to try and see how brushing this quick re recap goes. Immediately, this fixed what I couldn't do in the squeegee, which was move the concrete without creating divots. It really leveled things out. I noticed I got better results if I pitched the broom down, and it did help smooth everything out a little bit, kind of like the squeegee did. I'm still not 100% sure if I'll use this on the second coat, but it definitely did seem to help flatten everything out. I almost liked it more than the squeegee. And I'll see you tomorrow once this is dry. The next day, things cured, but you can see that there was a little bit of weirdness and inconsistencies. Everything looks good, but you can see right here, there's even a little bit of that primer spot still visible. I also went to a different Home Depot that had really good bags of the recap, so we shouldn't have any of those hardened pebbles that we had last time. I wanted to give myself the best chances, so I used my honing block again to get rid of basically the broom texture, but maybe scoring it also will help. I think my technique is gonna be better on this second pour. I'm basically gonna lay out all of my concrete along the back side of the slab and then pull it towards the front of the sidewalk, which is the low spot. It didn't take me long to ditch the squeegee, this time on coat two. I was just able to pull the concrete so much easier with the brush. Number one, it didn't create those divots I complained about on the first coat, but it pulled the concrete slowly and it prevented me from spilling more over the edge than I wanted to in any one spot. I got the best results when I had a wet bead in front of my broom for the full pull and I just did a consistent smooth line. I broomed this second coat twice as well. First, just to spread it and smooth things out, and a second time to get the desired texture about 10 minutes later. But I do think we should go back to see what this sidewalk looked like before. It was rough. I think there was more surface area damage than in good condition. That's just a challenge though. Let's check out these afters. 
This is a night and day difference and I could not be more happy with the results that I got. I'm not kidding, before when you were walking up this sidewalk, it was like you were approaching a trap house, but now it is basically brand new looking. I honestly don't know if anyone would be able to tell that this is a patch compared to just a single slab of concrete. I'm keeping this little wood piece in for a while while the concrete cures. I don't wanna break off any corners, but I'm happy. It's a big improvement. Of course, I'm curious to see how this holds up over time, but there's really only one way to find out. We just gotta let this be. This is all a part of the Curb Appeal renovation episode of my income property series. If you haven't already, make sure and check those out, and we'll see you next time on Mike's First Flip. Oh no! Oh no! Hey, everything's still working. That was a real accident. It's Mike's First Flip.